Hey guys, we finish up our shading series on Anime Studio by showing you how to bind your shades as well as apply smart bones where needed. Okay, so now that we have all the shading in place, we need to figure out how it's going to move with our character. If we advance forward to, let's say, about frame 6, and we come over here to the layers and we click on the Marley Bone layer, and we take the Rotate Bone tool, we can see here that the shadows are not moving with the eyebrows. So that, of course, is a slight issue, which can be corrected with Smart Bones. So first, we'll click on the left bone here and type in EB1 and hit Enter. The second one will be EB2, hit Enter. So now we have these bones named and we can come up here to the actions panel by going to window actions and we can create then some smart bones for this action. So first we'll name this one EB1 the same as your eyebrow bone click OK and we are now inside that action so on frame one we'll raise the eyebrows as high as they can go and then click on that shading and we will then take the translate points tool and just raise the shading up so that it corresponds with the eyebrows. So now we go to zero and one, we can see that there is a change. We also have this other shadow right here we can adjust also on frame one. So we'll just bring all the points up like that to make sure everything is set during the animation of that eyebrow. So now, double clicking on mainline and clicking on the bone layer, make sure you always click on a bone layer when you want to create a smart action for that bone. We will name this action EB2 and same process. We'll rotate the eyebrow up. We will then come in here clicking on that shaded layer. We will then take the translate points tool and move the shadows up and we can do the same for that secondary shadow then which is right there. Just kind of come in here and move everything up. So now when we are done here we can even do some curvature correction come back out here to the main line by double clicking on it and then come down here and that keyframe place on frame 6 you can see now when we animate the eyebrows up the shadows go along with it which is a simple correction and we could do that for the lip and such if we wanted to with like the mouth movements but that is up to you for right now, things are looking pretty good and we'll leave it as is. And if you want to do that correction on your own, you can. So now we come to the other part here. When it comes to moving the shadows with your body movements, such as the torso and neck, because we have two main shadows on the body in those areas. So first, let's come down here to the layers panel and let's bring back the arm here so that it's visible. Gives us a better idea of what we're dealing with here. And when we rotate the bone or use the manipulate bones, you can see the shadow just isn't falling along on any part of the face. So we can easily correct these a few different ways. First, if we click on the facial shading layer and take the bind layer tool, we can bind that layer to the head bone. We can do the same for the face shading 2 layer, as well as the ear shadow. So those are some pretty easy fixes. We can even do so with the lip shadow. Now, when it comes to the torso shading, we're probably going to have to do some more advanced works here. Because first, we could just try binding that to the torso. but Looking back here at the head with the neck, you can see when we did that, that it isn't really quite moving with the neck. So let's highlight all those points and bind points to the neck. Now we have that connected to the neck. So let's take this a step further here 
and we'll take the bind points tool again and only highlight the three points on the edge of that shadow and click bind points to the torso bone. So now we have something going on like this. It looks a little bit better, I would say, in terms of just kind of what's going on there. But we will need to make some corrections when it comes to the smart bones. So now let's click on that bottom body layer and highlight that entire torso shade and click bind points, of course, with the bind points tool. And we can click on that top torso bone, take your bind points, and we will just try to grab the top portion here of the shade and then bind points. And now when we move, things look a little bit better because it seems like the shadow is moving more with the body. It's not just kind of pasted on there and looking stationary. So with that, what we can do here is come over here and just finish up on the face here. We'll just take the facial highlights and bind to the head bone. So now you can see everything is moving like it should on the face. We sh still need to work with this neck shadow here, which will require the use of smart bones. So, so far so good. This is kind of a process as you can tell when we're working on this stuff. And you can see as we bend up and down, there seems to be a slight problem because we have that patch layer that is covering up the seams of the arm. It's also over the top of the shadow. So what we could do, there's a couple things we could do depending on your situation. First, we could take that shade and highlight the shade with the select points tool. Control X to cut, Command X if you're on a Mac. And then we could bring a new layer in, name it Neck Shadow, and place it above the patch. Now the problem with this is, depending on how you have your layers constructed, you might have this situation going on where the shadow goes over the face as well. So that might not work for you. So if it doesn't work for you, like it isn't for us, we will have to find another solution. In this case, what's gonna to have to happen here is we're gonna to have to play around with that patch layer. So we can take the transform layer tool and come in here and we can move it down slightly, or we could even resize it to see what happens. Now, of course, this is kind of a touchy area here, so we have to make sure that we don't move it too much to where it disrupts the flow of the design with the arm. And that looks pretty good, and it also is far enough away from the shadow to where there shouldn't be a cutoff of the shadow. I mean, if we move really big up and down, you know, we might have some issues, but so far, what we need to do now is bind this next shadow back since we put it on a new layer. So we'll click the bind points tool with that next shadow layer selected and bind all the points to the neck bone. So we have that going on. Now, if we move the head, you know, we kind of have that same issue going on here with the points kind of floating around. So what we can do there is first click on the bone layer and make sure that we are on the neck bone here. We're just gonna delete these keyframes we have going on here right now. And what we'll do here is try to kind of figure out the range here. So if we click on the head and we move it back and forth, you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, let's try taking a look here. Let's rotate, hmm. See this kind of takes some work because you kind of have to figure out exactly what's going on here with the bones before you set your smart bones down. So I think we have it here now. Let's click on that neck bone and we'll name this one neck and you can name neck bone, but we'll just put neck and we'll come over here to the actions panel, make a new action, name it neck, click OK, and we'll rotate then the bone so that it goes up like that, just slightly, even though it's subtle. We can then come in here with the translate points tool and just move things down so that they connect and they're not sticking out. Kind of come in like that. 
And if you had more time, you could probably spend a lot more time getting this just perfect. But you know, we're just kind of doing a quicker job here for the sake of the tutorial. So now you have that thing going on when the head moves that way. So now what we'll need to do, clicking on that bone layer again, we will go to new action and name this one neck too, because we're gonna create two different actions for this bone. So we'll take then the rotate bone tool and move it the other way. Then we can come in here with our corrections on the shadow layer and just move those points up and get them all good to go. So now, coming back out here to the main line, going to, let's see here, the character bone layer here. We can take the manipulate bones tool. As you can see, there's still some slight issue, but for the most part with the neck, as we move it up and down, it stays connected. Now with that gap that you saw, you would have to take it a step further, you know, make some more smart bone actions and just really kind of go with all of the instances when you're moving your body parts and make sure everything is covered or constrain the body so that it can't move to the point where you see the shading breaking. So it really just comes down to your situation, but it looks like everything is pretty good to go with this. And this should give you a good idea as to how you can bind your shading to your character when working in Anime Studio. But anyway, that's all we have for you for this shading series. If you have yet to see any of the other shading tutorials, you can check them out by clicking on the annotations on your screen. We also have a playlist for that. And if you'd like more tutorials in general, you can visit the official Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Please subscribe. We also are on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I provided the narration for this tutorial, and Jim Mills recorded. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.